This is a News Channel 2 Town Hall meeting, the sewer solvent scandal. Welcome back to our live Town Hall meeting on the Cedar Rapids sewer solvent scandal. Now, our focus now is on what the city's doing to prevent corruption in the future and why it hasn't happened sooner. Almost immediately following our I-Team report in March, the City Council began changing policies to put accountability back into your government. We'll talk to the Council about that in just a moment. But first, we want to remind you that you can get your questions asked tonight. Call this number you see on the screen, 395-7686, and we'll take more of your calls in just a moment. Now, here's some of what the council has done so far to deal with the sewer solvent scandal. The council fired two city employees. They created a standard purchasing policy for all departments within the city. The council now requires city departments to take bids on every purchase over $500. They've reorganized the sewer department management. And the council is trying to hold every single city employee more accountable for their actions. Don Thomas, Streets Commissioner. A lot of people have said, why the heck has it taken something so terrible to get these motions in action? Why has it taken the scandal to get things uh, changed like we're talking about now? Well, first of all, uh, you may or may not remember, but I inherited this situation. And I was r rather surprised and, and I was helped out before I came into office by uh, hearing from Beverly Van Horn that there might be something going on. There was some question about the amount and the cost of the sewer solvent that was being used by the city. So mm -hmm. I immediately got involved with an investigation myself. Um, uh, we were very busy through January and, uh, and by the time February came around uh, I had enough information on, on my part that I did asked uh, for the solvent to be quit purchasing the solvent and uh, I think that uh, the policies that we've now got in, into effect will be a good double checks and, and I just don't see that that's going to happen. Well, you mentioned that you inherited it. Actually, the, we all inherited it, but uh, it was known about for years and then uh, someone uh, told about it uh, a year and a half ago. So how effective are these policies that we've put into to being now? How, how effective can they be? Well, I, I think that they can be very effective because uh, I sign uh, anything over $1,000 uh, purchase orders for that and attached to that information is the documentation that goes with the, the purchase order. In other words, if there's three bids, all, they're all there attached to that. And the reason we take the, uh, whether we take low bid or middle bid or high bid, the reasons are, uh, are right there written down. Right. Now, if that information isn't there, then I'm not going to sign it. It's going back. And if I have any questions, I'll, I'll get over there to the streets department and, and right. deal with uh, the situation. Bob, I guess I'd like to challenge you as far as the council's known about it for years because uh, it wasn't until March that the council was made aware of it and uh, we acted quickly on it then. The notion that uh, sewer solvent has been dumped down the drains and sewers of uh, the town, well, dumped, I'm not sure is the right word, applied or used because the grease buildup in the sewers, which is causing sewer backups, the solvent was purchased for a specific use. And dumping, applying it, placing it where it belonged was actually down the drain. Mayor Serbisek, I have a question for you. How responsible is the former administration for this problem? Does the responsibility lie with them? I think um, in terms of uh, pointing fingers or pointing blame, that, that's not the important part. Mm -hmm. um, the important part is getting to the bottom of the issue and taking action to prevent it from ever happening again. I think we recognize that some of the policies we had in place prior to uh, the most recent policies we've adopted did allow these kinds of things to occur. Um, I don't know if, if pointing blame is the real issue here. I think ensuring that it never happens again is the key issue. I agree with you there. J.D., maybe you can ask, answer this question. How should Cedar Rapids residents feel about their city government right now? Right now? Should they have confidence in their leaders to, to do the right thing? Well, I would hope they would have confidence, but I'd like to go back a little bit to your earlier question. Sure. Uh, it was the operational part uh, of buying the chemical that got out of hand. Mm -hmm. And as Commissioner Hansen said, the policy that was in effect at that time was that the department heads uh, should be taking quotes on that and their commissioners should know about it. Uh, and I, I think it fell down at that area in the, in the past. This came up, uh, at least according to some of the articles I've seen, a, a year or two years ago to uh, that particular commissioner. Uh, I'm appalled that it wasn't taken care of at that time. 
All right, we, uh, we've got to take another break here. We'll come back and we'll touch on that. Plus, we'll find out perhaps can we get our money back. So we'll talk about those things. Take your calls a little bit later. We'll be right back. Please stay with us. This is KGAN, Cedar Rapids, Waterloo, Iowa City, Dubuque. This is a News Channel 2 town hall meeting, the sewer solvent scandal. Welcome back. The sewer solvent scandal has cost us, the taxpayers, more than a million dollars since 1986. And that's a million dollars that we know about. About $120,000 of that was allegedly used to bribe Cedar Rapids city officials in the streets and sewer departments. Also that the city of Cedar Rapids would continue to buy Steve Golden's overpriced sewer solvent. Now the question is, how do we know for sure that this kind of corruption is not happening as we're speaking? in other city departments. I've personally heard some city workers say they feel that this is just the tip of an iceberg. I think we've all heard that. Well, now it's time to take your calls. Before we go ahead and go to our phone lines, I want to give you the number. If it's busy, please keep trying. Call back again. That number is 395-7686, 395-7686. Let's go ahead and take a call. Hello, you're live on News Channel 2. What's your question? Yeah, there's uh, five or six people that got arrested for taking them bribes. I was wondering if there's any attempt on attempt from getting that $120,000 back from them people. How do we get our money back? Absolutely. Good question. Absolutely. And uh, the city council, uh, in conversations with the U.S. Attorney's Office, it's still part of an ongoing investigation, but we are going to do everything in our power to try and reclaim any of the dollars um, that are deserved to the citizens of the community. How do you do that? How can you go about getting it back? In a lot of different ways. Um, I don't think there's any one place where that uh, will come from, but we are currently, uh, and I would refrain from commenting on the specifics of, of how that happens, but uh, we are investigating all of our options through our legal department as well as under some of the federal and state statutes. So there is hope to get our money back. All right, let's there go is. to another caller, please. Your question? If this is the tip of the iceberg, I question the credibility of giving amnesty to what you're calling, in your words, petty thieves. I'll answer that question. I think um, it's directed toward you, sir. Um, the, the word amnesty is, a, is an incorrect usage, on, uh, and I think that's not what the intent was here. We have 1,300 employees in the city of Cedar Rapids. Those 1,300 employees are doing what I consider to be an excellent job. Some of the controls weren't in place. There were policies that went on in some departments that shouldn't have perhaps gone on. Um, I think what we were talking about is ensuring that some of those things don't happen in the future. I don't believe uh, that there is widespread, um, whatever you might want to say, bri uh, petty theft or, or whatever. That does not occur. We have some very hardworking, dedicated employees in the city of Cedar Rapids, and I think this, because of the ugliness of, of this kind of situation, has caused a lot of people that work hard every day to get a bad reputation and a bad name. Okay, we want to continue to answer viewer questions. Go ahead, you're live on the air on News Channel 2. What's your question? Yes, what city officials did Bev Van Horn go to with the information before your report? And did she tell the current Cedar Rapids auditor why was she fired? Mm, three uh, good questions. Yes, I think I want to add here, I think we're going to have, uh, Sandy's going to have a report uh, on Ms. Van Horn coming yes. up in just a little bit. But, uh, Commissioner's Mayor, anyone want to answer that? I guess for starters, she wasn't fired. She resigned. Uh, over well, why did she resign? Was it a part of this? Bob, I guess you'd have to ask her if Sandy hasn't already. But uh, there was a difference of opinion as far as a new job opening in the department. And... Uh, she was dissatisfied with the situation and uh, submitted her resignation. All right, well, as uh, Amy said, we'll have more on that with uh, Sandy coming up a little bit later. We've got another caller. Your, your question, please. Uh, yes, I'd like to know why uh, city employees have tools uh, to use at their disposal when the taxpaying citizen has to go out and uh, rent them if they need to use one. Well, I don't think they really have them at their disposal. Is that no. correct? They don't. They don't have them at their disposal. They have them for use during the hours that uh, we're doing work for the city, and that can be sometimes 24 hours a day when we're out uh, cleaning streets uh, or cleaning snow, especially. So it's uh, it's intended that they return all that 
uh, those tools each day and turn them in, and uh, that's that's what we're trying to do. Is make so, sure so a lot of workers have that, taken advantage. They're supposed to take them home, and we went, we've gone through that with them, and they understand. Uh, I, I talked to them this morning again about it. So, so hopefully that won't happen again. All right. Hopefully not. All okay. Right, very good. Still ahead, you'll hear from the woman who first blew the whistle. We were talking about her a moment ago. That was a year and a half ago. So why wasn't something done before now? That and more when we come back. This is a News Channel 2 town hall meeting, the sewer solvent scandal. Welcome back, everyone. We're told our phones are ringing off the hook. We want to get to each and as many of the calls as we can in just a moment, so please be patient with us. Stay in there. Prosecutors say they've traced the bribery, theft, and corruption in the Cedar Rapids city government back to 1986. But you know, the first allegations of wrongdoing surfaced just a year and a half ago. Why did it take so long, about six years, for someone in city government to spot wrongdoing? And then the question comes up, why did the corruption continue for more than a year until our News Channel 2 I-Team report forced city government to listen. We'll ask those, the city council those questions. We'll take your phone calls in just a moment. But now uh, let's meet the woman who first blew the whistle. And Sandy, I know you spoke exclu exclusively with this woman last week. Tell us again who she is and what she had to say. Amy, the, the whistleblower was then city payroll clerk Beverly Van Horn. When Beverly discovered the corruption a year and a half ago, she says she took her concerns to then streets commissioner Wayne Murdoch and her boss, current city auditor Bob McMahon. When nothing came of that, Beverly says she turned to government watchdog Carol Martin, who came to us. Throughout the scandal, Beverly stayed behind the scenes until last week. That's when she told her story to News Channel 2. For 32 years, Beverly Van Horn worked as a payroll clerk in Cedar Rapids City Auditor's Office. She knew firsthand what money the city paid out and where it went. Van Horn says something appeared terribly wrong about a year and a half ago. She smelled a rat in the city's dealings with Steve Golden and Intertrade Chemical. Why did you become suspicious in the first place? We had some employees come in to pick up their last checks and they told me how this solvent was being dumped just so they could reorder and they, they said that they understood that that bothered me. And so after they left, I t told my boss about it. And all he said was, well, that he thought Golden was a slick one and it just stopped there. So then I finally got to Carol Martin and we worked together and she came to you. Van Horn says besides going to her boss, City Auditor Bob McMahon, she took her concerns about Intertrade to then Streets Commissioner Wayne Murdoch a year and a half ago. Van Horn says she just couldn't believe the money the city was spending with Intertrade Chemical. In fact, for 32 years you never saw payments like that going out to any other company. No, I, did. no, I didn't. I have not. And I was in accounts payable for a long time where I could watch things. Though Beverly has now left the city, she says she feels good about blowing the whistle and would encourage anyone else with information to do the same. Just do what you think is right. I mean, to me, I feel good about it. I know it was right. This is amazing. We're all here tonight because one woman had the guts to speak up and actually do something about it and put an end to all of this and give us the report so that we could tell other people about it. Do you have to be a city employee, though, to step in and do something like she did? Well, we should all know that. Absolutely not. Yeah. I mean, this is a clear example of that. Um, Carol Martin is a good example of that. Uh, she's not afraid to ask questions. She's not afraid to dig and, and to look into things. And the point here is that just one person can make a big difference. You could be the next person that does that. Amy? Uh, as I said earlier, our phone lines are jammed right now. If you'd like to make that call, please still try. Our number is 395-7686. We want to go right to the phones and answer your questions. Go ahead. You're live on the air on News Channel 2. What is your question? Yes, I'd like to know when Carol Martin comes in and asks city employees questions, uh, there, it has been known that these city employees get reprimanded. And, I mean, are there other things that are getting covered up? Good question. She yes. says if, if, she, if you come in with a complaint, you're going to get reprimanded. No. No. That's not the case, well. Amy. Uh, I'm not sure what the uh, caller is making reference to, but uh, this, all city records, well, all permitted city records, certain records are uh, uh, subject to privacy laws, uh, civil rights, litigation, such cases as that. But otherwise, Information is available, and city employees are uh, 
under instructions to provide it on a timely basis. They're not required so, to drop everything. So you want people to come in and give you this information if they have it? You, yes. You beg for it. Absolutely. Very good. Another caller, please. Your question. Okay. What I was uh, noticed today in the paper was that the two fired employees were not going to get the fifteen thousand and five thousand uh, dollar retirement benefits or whatever. Now, are they still going to get re paid retirement or not? Are they going to get any benefits of any kind that you know? Mayor of? Service Act. Um, the uh, IPER system that city employees operate under is independent of the city. We don't have control over that, so. Um, that part is, is not anything the City Council has action over. Uh, the uh, specifics of the action that the City Council took yesterday regarding the other benefits, sick leave, vacation, um, and pay, um, are confidential as a result of a private meeting that the City Council had to discuss that. But um, uh, the article is essentially correct. It was in the newspaper. J.D., how do you feel? Many people out there would say uh, these two men uh, allegedly are crooks. They don't deserve the benefits. Uh, do you think it's the right decision? I think we made the right decision, and uh, the court uh, system is now uh, taking care of the situation as far as these gentlemen are concerned. I think city council needs to look at the management end of it uh, on what went on and to tighten those things up. Does this whole scandal bring into question the form of government that we have, the commission government? Is this thing outdated? Are we having the wrong kind of government? We, do we have enough checks and balances? I, I, I would have to say that the form of government doesn't have anything to do with it. It happens in all forms. For over 20 years I worked as a DCI agent. I can tell you that I worked in other communities in the state of Iowa that had the same kind of situations with different forms of government. Look around the country, you see it. And one of your callers earlier said, how does it happen in the city and it doesn't happen anywhere else? I suggest that, uh, yes, it, it happened in the city. It's very unfortunate, but go back and read your news accounts this past year. There are two major companies here in Cedar Rapids that had the very same type of things happen to them by very high officials. Okay. Okay. Uh, so. We're not the only ones. Okay, J.D., we've got to go ahead and get our calls in before the end of the show. Go ahead. You're live on the air. Yeah, I'd like to know who makes up uh, all the schedules to say how much manpower goes and does each job. Because it seems like they got a lot of wasted manpower standing around doing nothing, uh, uh, such as they have four workers and one wor one person doing the job and three watching. Uh, is it necessary to have three supervisors at a time, or is this a fair comparison? It seems like anytime you talk about city workers, they're saying that there's uh, six people doing the job of one person. Uh, is this a fair comparison that he's giving right now? Well, I, I think the schedules are made up to uh, take care of the projects that are that are done by the quadrant foreman in each of the quadrants and uh, sometimes uh, there, there needs to be a foreman there, sometimes there's an inspector there. Uh, they each have different qualifications. Uh, the union has certain things that uh, allows people to do and uh, they, it's because of that that we have uh, a need sometimes for what it looks like more people and there should be. But uh, everybody's supposed to be working and doing the job that they're supposed to be doing and they're not supposed to be standing around. All right, we have another uh, question from a viewer. We went out uh, with our cameras today, and uh, here's that question. My name is Penny Merstick, and my question is, will there, because of the corruption, will there be any restructuring in the city because of what's happened about this? That's a very good question. Will there be any restructuring in the city? I imagine this sum has already taken place. Uh, oh, gentlemen? I can take that. Don? Um, I, I believe we've touched on it all, already, that restructuring is underway at... Uh, it started uh, almost immediately after we knew what was going on and, and th there was an investigation underway. We decided to get uh, purchasing practices in line and change them from the way they were. And now more recent, and the consultant has totally adopted those purchasing practices. And now we more recently are, are looking at the uh, receiving practices to get in line with the state auditor's request to uh, do a better job with those things. So. All right. We have another caller. Uh, could we have that question, please? Uh, hello. Um, I have a question about the city employees uh, that were not management and have not been involved or proven in stealing and all that and who feel sort of betrayed by this whole thing uh, that management has done. Uh, my question is, what is being done for these employees who are honest, hardworking employees and who are really hurting over this and who are being ask uh, you know if they got their sewer solvent payment today when they're when they're going out and collecting garbage and stuff like that yeah. some of the public is harassing these city employees what's being done to help these 
Right. Any assistance programs for those? And this is a very important question because uh, not only are there a lot of city workers who say they're hurting, but what can be done to change the perception Guilt, of Cedar Rapids city, sure. city government? Yes. I would like to ask the community that's watching today that, <coughs> to understand that this is a serious issue. Um, everybody who works for the city feels the pain of what happened and does a good job of what they do. This was a management problem isolated to a few individuals. And what I'd ask the community to do is not joke about what happened here because the people that they joke with take it pretty personally. Absolutely. And we've been in a number of meetings with those employees and found out about some of the horror stories of what people have said in the community. So I guess I would ask the community, please understand uh, this is not a joking matter for any of us or any city employee, and please respect that and, and don't um, tell unfair jokes to, to anyone. Because and if anybody has a problem dealing with this, they should come to their department heads and managers and say, hey, help me out here. How, tell me how I can deal with this, right? That's right. right. All right, very good. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with some more phone calls in just a moment. Please, please stay with us. This is a News Channel 2 town hall meeting, the sewer solvent scandal. We welcome you back to our meeting. We're rapidly running out of time. We are. We have many, many callers on the line, and we want to get to them immediately. Uh, if you can hear me, go ahead. Let's take your call. Hello? Hello. Yes. yes. Right. Go ahead with your question. What accounting firm does the city's annual audit, and why didn't they suggest any of the safeguards that the state auditor's office has to, put it, to be put into place? Wow. Yeah. You're, you're smiling there, so go ahead. I'm afraid you put me on the spot. I can't remember the name. Well, it's I mean, okay, but there is one, and one but, uh, answer the second part. Of we the did go out for uh, bids, and we have the uh, the books audited every year. Uh, the city has uh, been awarded uh, excellence in auditing or accounting, fourteen out of the last fifteen years, and that's stunning. How do they get that when this happened? <laughs> the reference was made to banks earlier, as far as embezzlement that takes place at banks. There was nothing found wrong with the accounting practices with the city. Nothing whatsoever. The state auditor confirmed that. Uh, there was some question as far as the, uh, some of the purchasing procedures. Those have been addressed by the city council. We are continuing to address additional procedures to tighten them up. Okay, thank you. Next caller, please, your question. If I could add in. Oh. Can I jump in just Go a ahead, second? Please. The state auditor has looked at the city's books before. Uh, they were called back by the DCI to look specifically at one department and, and those practices going on there. So this was a special audit, uh, very, na very narrow in scope. I have a question for all of you. Just going back to Beverly Van Horn just for a moment, why did it take six years for someone to notice that hundreds of thousands of dollars was being spent on this, perhaps incorrectly? What took so long? Why? Uh, it's a tough question, but any answers? I, I can only relate that in January, Carol Martin came to my office and made some comments uh, about the uh, sewer solvent purchases. Uh, it was at that time that uh, my office put together a list going back about two years of all the sewer so solvent that was purchased and we made a typed list of that and at that time since it's public record I gave Carol Martin a copy of it because she brought it to my attention and I immediately took a copy of it over to Commissioner Thomas and I said I think you got a problem. Uh, but it was still as, three as months. A, with, but it was as still a matter of fact, that's the list that Sandy Reesgrass okay. showed on TV when she broke her story. All right, all right, we're just about out of time. I would like to give each of you gentlemen a chance to respond and say anything that you'd like. You'll have 30 seconds apiece. We know it was tough being down here tonight and facing the public's yes, questions and things. Yes, we greatly appreciate it. Don Thomas, we start with you, sir. Well, with a seven-and-a-half-month in investigation now behind us, I'm interested in proceeding with our everyday normal business in a very positive manner. And I believe that most of our workers are honest, hard workers, mm -hmm. And I've stressed with them that my goal is to proceed from this point in time on with efficiency and with uh, good attitudes and honesty. That's very important to me, and I think it's got to be very important to them. We need to improve our image to our customers as citizens. I'm encouraged that we can get on with normal business now while the legal system takes care of the due process of law in this situation. All right, thank you very much. J.D., in 30 seconds or less? Well, the investigation isn't quite over yet, uh, and the legal process is taking its, uh, its avenues. I think it's time that the council tightened up its management practices and uh, take care of the respective departments. And I encourage any citizen that has any questions about any department to call any one of us. All right, very good. Mayor? Again, I'd like to thank KGAN for sponsoring tonight's town meeting. I think, uh, as the other commissioners <coughs> pointed out, 
uh, a tough issue. We elected five people last year in this community to deal with tough issues. Uh, we're beginning to uh, continue the effort towards purchasing, receiving all those policies. And I'd just like to assure the people in this community that uh, the City Council will not stop once this investigation is over to make change. Uh, change is ongoing, change for the better, and um, we've got people here that will deal with those issues. Lyle? Just to echo what's been said, I agree. But to build on that, I guess, the community needs to remember that this is only a black eye. It's not a death blow. We have an excellent community here, uh, excellent city workers. We have a wonderful uh, place to live and work. And uh, the council is working with that to uh, continue to make it a better future for all of us. All right, Commissioner Kramer. I'd just like to point out that the people in the field, the guys that are working, men and women working in the city, are 99.9% .9 honest, hardworking individuals. And they are also angry about this because they have been smeared just as bad as anybody. And they're going to take the hit for what five bad people have done. Okay. Right. Thank you so much, gentlemen. We, we appreciate, appreciate your concern here. and your care for being here tonight. Well, it's clear from tonight's discussion that the sewer solvent scandal is far from over, but we are making progress. We hope our town meeting has helped you to understand what went wrong and what the city of Cedar Rapids is doing to move forward. We'd like to thank our mayor, Larry Servicek, and the city council members, Don Thomas, J.D. Smith, Lyle Hansen, and David Kramer. We'd also like to thank you at home for calling in your questions, and most of all, for getting involved. Thanks for joining us. Good night, everyone. Good night. This town hall meeting, the sewer solvent scandal, was produced by KGAN-TV, News Channel 2.